and and with that, I think we're gonna go. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the After Hours Gaming League. We have a great game set up for you. I am Pato from Razor Weapon Media. With me on the mic for the first time is Kuniv. How's it going this morning, man? Hey, it's going pretty good. Ready for a matchup between these two teams? I think it's gonna be great. Yep, yep. And these are actually these are actually some pretty stellar teams. We actually have. Uh, our blue team is actually going to be Raytheon, and then Pipeworks is going to be our red team. Last time I actually got to ca cast Pipeworks, they actually were a really strong team. A Mordekaiser, their their captain, uh, is not going to actually be playing this game. They're actually going to be running someone else. So we'll see how their lineup does with the with a new mix of players uh, on there. But I expect good things from both of these teams to fill in because. We missed the picks and bans because they did them outside of chat because HGL is fun like that. Uh, we had Shen, Wukong, Leona, Sona, Kha'Zix, and Malphite bans. And like you kind of pointed out, they had a lot of support bans. Yeah, I think that they must be targeted towards bot lane. Possibly that's either their weak link or their strong link. I think it's got to be one of those two if they're going to use more than one ban on bot lane. Yeah, pretty interesting. And then we also have Wukong, which... I've actually been seeing a lot in HGL and mid lane. Um, it's been kind of like a, a favorite of a lot of teams to run him mid. There's kind of a counter to that. And uh, Malphite and Shen, just like the big huge bullies that are, have actually pretty good team, effect, uh, team fight effect and really turn games, especially um, at this level uh, with these teams. Like anything with a, any team with a global alt usually has a pretty decent advantage. Um, just because map awareness some, it sometimes is at a premium here, so it, a lot of times teams lose sight of uh of what uh global alts are up and sometimes it can shift lanes very well but if we look if we look at these two teams they're pretty stacked up i mean amumu makes it in there's a lot of aoe and tankiness as well as some good range poke between jace and caitlin uh for the blue team which is going to be raytheon and then on the other side though we have a pretty beast team because hecarim we have hecarim we have uh, with his AOE ult, we have Ezreal, who's always been pretty good in like every game. Every ga competitive game I've been casting, Ezreal's been in, and he's been tearing fools up. Um, and then Kale, who... Kale, I was talking about it a little bit last night, but um, I think the best ex explanation of Kale was Dignitas versus CLG this week on Thursday for the LCS, where they're playing CLG. And they spent like a week and a half coming up with like this big, huge like diagram flowchart of like, all right, if they pick this or ban this, then we pick this. And like all these counter moves, and then... Um, CLG left Kale open, and Dignitas was like, "All right, <laughs> screw that week and a half of work. We're just running Kale comp and like <laughs> and dominated." So, um, if you're gonna let one squeak through, I think Kale's a good choice to build a team around. She's too much damage right now, and that all is just can change games. Yeah, it can. And then you're gonna have and you're gonna have two ways to protect two um, potential targets. You're gonna have Kale's ult, uh, Divine Intervention, plus you're gonna have Black Shield from Morgana. Um, you're gonna have a lot of protect for Ezreal or whoever you want to go in. If you want to initiate with uh, Hecarim, get get a little bit crazy and dive in there underneath some turrets. Yeah, Hecarim definitely has to get tanky early on. Their team's looking pretty squishy compared to the left team, which is basically a right click and win. Press R and it's over if they get to mid game and they're doing well. So I think Hecarim has to get off some early ganks and make something happen because they are looking pretty squishy, even with the Nagus from Tarek. It's gonna be interesting. It should definitely be interesting. How do you feel about Amumu in the new jungle? Because the, the, the top tier now has basically been boiled down to Xin Zhao, J4, Vi, which weren't banned and were completely open. But Amumu is still that champion that's like everybody still is in love with um, Curse of the Sad Mummy. So do you think it's just that? Or, I mean, how do you feel about him now in the current jungle meta? I think he's great. I'd put him in the top five easily. He's too hard to mess up is the deal with him. Um, he's got one skill shot and everything else. You just build health, Sunfire Cape and press R and kill things, so it's not really... <laughs> it's He's never going to be bad, as long as he can clear the jungle decently. Anyway, he's just one of those late-game carries, and I think the left-side team is a lot scarier looking, just to be honest. I think they've got a better shot at this, just from team select. Yeah, I think they actually have a, a pretty beefy team. It's going to be hard to deal with. At least it's a front line. Plus, I mean, if Morgana goes in there and wants to engage on them, they're a gate away from just, like, running out of it and just being like, all right, whatever, re-engage, or whatever they want to do. Both teams have a lot of speed on their side, I'd say. Nunu's got Blood Boil, and they have the Jace gate. But on the other side, um, Ezreal's pretty hard to catch, and you've got Kale and Hecarim with movement speed boost. So. Yep, yep. A couple cleanses, too. I'd like to point out that Kale has cleanse. Not something I've seen too often, but I think it's a good idea, considering the Mumu. Yeah, that actually could be a pretty good idea to make sure she can still be able to get off uh, whatever she needs to. 
in the bot lane, um, yeah, we're going to see the same thing. We're going to see cleanses actually from both uh, both ADs down here. They both just don't want to get caught uh, in any uh, sort of CC situation, which come late game, that is going to be uh, a big factor Or as we get farther on the game. At least in the early game, Tarek, that's kind of the natural response, but definitely in this case, going to be one of those scenarios where if you get CC'd, it might be the end of you, so cleanse is going to be your best friend. And yeah, should be should be a good little matchup here as we start out. Both teams run out the gates really quickly. This is actually one of the fastest buys actually you've seen from HGL team. Some sometimes usually there's someone sitting around in, in base like still trying to click and find uh, that health potion. But in this case, both teams heading out with a purpose. Although Kale like already top. Um, although she, I hope I think she's running to that tri brush or unless she's just gonna camp her turret. But nope. Just decided she's gonna be a buff for her top turret as we see her uh, <laughs> run around it right there. <laughs> gonna keep that safe. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to don't want to give up that early. That early tower? Well, they didn't pick Heimerdinger, so I don't think they're going to do that without four teleports. Funny story, I played a game with, uh, I played a custom game with Dan did once, and he's like, new meta, and he ran out from the beginning of the game, put two auto attacks on the mid turret, and, d and, and suicided, and he's like, new meta. <laughs> Gotta whittle down that turret early. Interesting. Does that um, reduce the gold you're worth? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, well, if it did, that might be a bull strategy. <laughs> that would be actually like, I don't think I don't think uh, executions uh, affect that. Um, I think it's only if it's uh, player kills. But I, I'm not 100 percent sure. So if that did actually work, that would be pretty funny. Caitlin throwing a couple traps mid. I remember seeing that back in the day, <laughs> middle year. Oh Caitlin yeah, running mid, <laughs> setting up a bunch of traps to help whoever was mid. That would always start a fight, because then what we would do is, like, when I played support, I would just be, like, I usually play Janna, so i just, like, I have the Storm myself. i take I of the Storm, I have Storm myself, and just walk on them. But, yeah, that is, like, really old school, because nowadays, usually what you do with Caitlyn's is you actually th throw the traps around and key points to stop invasions. But at this point, she's actually helping out her mid by just throwing down some floor candy that hopefully, uh, she hopes the enemy might have a hard time trying to maneuver around. At least they have something else to think about while they're trying to, to lane in mid. Although Morgana is really one of those champions that's only going to be looking for landing that big, huge uh, Dark Binding to do anything. Because if she doesn't land Dark Binding, she really can't harass you that much. Definitely. And I think that does create a little bit of a zoning issue. She's going to have to wait till Caitlyn gets rid of those traps or step on them herself. And I wouldn't do that. So <laughs> <laughs> I like that they sent Cho'Gath mid. He's kind of one of those champions where he just pushes and clears the wave and nothing really happens. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, what people realize, basically, and, and see, the way Season 3 is going is, like, all right, like, so how do we counter... I mean, the, the easy way to counter mages and damage with the penetration thing is to stack health. And it counters burst mages, or just mages in general. And so if you throw someone like Cho'Gath that's already tanky, has a ton of sustain, hard to remove, has a built-in silence as well, it's like, what is a mage ever going to do to that once he gets going? And the only real thing that they can hope for is to actually possibly get in there and get a gank off in the early stage. Otherwise, he's just going to be kind of unmovable. And he can push back against Morgana, who normally kind of re relies on the fact that she can have really big pushes with her Tormented Soil. Definitely. I was also thinking that... that one of Morgana's strengths is that she can push, throwing down that oil spill and pushing the lane. Well, Cho'Gath can do the same thing. Yeah. I don't think much is going to happen there without a gank. So. so it's funny that we actually get to see the classic uh, Nunu Caitlyn lane, um, which Even actually was a, a response to Bruisers, um, was, was the main goal. That's actually why uh, Double Lift actually started playing it, and now, then everybody took on to it, realized how strong it was, because you get like 1,500 gold of... Or you did get 1,500 gold of attack speed because attack speed got more expensive, believe it or not, <laughs> in Season 3. So you got like all this free gold for team fights and trading, and you had all this movement speed, so it was hard to catch you. Um, but now they've nerfed it quite a bit. I think they took like 20% off uh, out of the total. But uh-oh, Morgana burning flash early. Bandage Toss going to land. No black shield. And they're trying to follow us up. Rupture did miss, and the ignite will go down, but that shouldn't be enough to kill Morgana, especially with uh, the heal. And Hecarim's just running around angry in the side brushes, but he's not going to be able to do much. <laughs> Just because Morgana's not going to be able to help him out much. And jumping into those two, not going to work out too well for him. He's waiting patiently for that E to come back up. Show plays this right. He could bait Morgana into a death. Oh, just going to push him off. Yeah, I personally those... like to leave him there. Yeah, I mean, again, yeah, like you said, like, I mean, you know as a jungler too, right? Like, the, it's a lot of it's like, you're just wasting his time. Like, you're actually getting a Mumu a little bit ahead by keeping him there, right? Exactly. The The worst plays I make are when I wait too long trying to gank one lane, and I get too far behind. So the longer you keep him there, the farther behind he's going to get. And he's one of those champions that needs a lot of farm, Hecarim. He's got to 
clear the way as fast as he can and get tanky and get that sheen for his Iceborne Gauntlet. But until then, he's not that strong of a champion. So the longer you keep him off, the better, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think it's probably one of those... I, a lot of players do that. Like, they have this information where they know someone's there. They know they're completely safe because they can see them. But they just kind of, like, throw that parting shot to be like, get out of here just because I think it almost, like, psychologically bugs people to have someone hovering there. It's like when someone's hovering over <laughs> your shoulder and you're trying to work or something like that. You're just like, no, get out of here. Like, I want to see us. I don't want to have to just keep, my like, the corner of my eye on you this entire time. I like to call that the mom factor. <laughs> He's like, go away, mom. So, so that that's would what make that the was. jungler the mom. I could could see that. <laughs> Trying to take care of her children and uh, their path lane. through life as they grow up, become level <laughs> as 18. They complain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why moms don't get enough love <laughs> in League of Legends. <laughs> uh, best analogy ever. Oh, Mumu coming in from the side hatch. Will he be able to land a ban shots though? Arcane shift burned early. That could be the key. Follows up, not going to have enough damage. Heal coming in from Tarek, but again, got to be a little bit patient with that arcane shift because he was never going to be caught. Um, until, unless he got hit by a Banish Toss, so all he had to do is wait for the Banish Toss and he could have Arcane Shift and would have been dodged and would have been not even taking any damage there. And they're coming right back in, he's waiting here patiently. He's gonna get oh, him again, dirty. he's still got his Flash and Cleanse, but... Ooh, Tarek taking one for the team, oh. but the Flash after is gonna seal the deal. And now we have Tarek alone, and he's gonna have a hard time trying to do anything here. Uh, might try to hang around in a bush somewhere and get some experience, but he's basically gonna be waiting until Ezreal gets back. Great patience shown by that Amumu. It's hard to gank bot lane twice. Usually you'd expect there to be a ward, and it's a little bit risky, but even without a pink bot, it paid off. Yeah, interesting enough, I mean, a, a lot of the bot lane dynamics I think a lot of um, players miss um, when they're first starting out trying to play it um, is just brush, how, how important brush control is. And like, there's, I mean, in general, a lot of players know, know this from watching games, but and it's kind of like tossed aside when you watch pro games. They never really comment on it as much, but unless there's like you know the big like notorious Alistar who we're seeing to finally come back in, or a Blitzcrank or something like that. But you really want to keep eye on that brush not only for um, the supports that are usually heavy um, CC laden, um, but also just for jungle ganks that'll come up through lane because a lot of times if you ward up your bottom river a lot and you ward it really really, really well then the, the only way for them to really come to, come for you is to try to come up uh, through there. And Hecarim waiting in the wings to try to capitalize on Kale getting dove on, but will he be able to run down this Jace? She needs to be careful not to get turned around on because a really quick gate shot could silence her really, really quickly. She has good reaction time. And now Morgana going all in on this Shogath. This is her chance. Put, throws on Tormented Soil. Black shields, but that's not going to help her kill him. Yeah, not quite enough. Interesting to notice um, that gank earlier that helped Cho'Gath out. He's winning quite a bit right now. It's up about 20 CS and Morgana has to go back again and he just got a blue buff. He's gonna heal up off this creep wave and he's staying for a really long time. Yeah, I mean he's, I mean once he we hits this stage now where he's past level 6 and he can just farm up feast stacks, I mean he's just gonna be chilling in that mid lane and just being like, like how huge can I get? Like that's gonna be that's gonna be a question for him. And then eventually, when he gets involved in team fights, I mean, Morgana's never gonna really be able to push in that turret, be able to get out of lane, which is where we can actually see her be really effective too. It's like once she starts to really push for that lane, she rotates to bottom or wherever she wants to. And if she can get in there and get off a good um, soul shackle, I mean, a lot of times that can just cl shut down an entire lane, get a bunch of kills, you can rotate a dragon. I mean. Really, really, really can be devastating. So Cho'Gath's actually keeping her honest, keeping that, that push even, and she's not going to be as effective as she wants to be until she's able to get into team fights. This is true. With that uh, first blood gold going to blue side, uh, they've taken the lead now, and I wonder how they're going to deal with it. Who's going to get this first dragon? I think that's going to be the turning point in the rest of this game, is whoever takes that... Yeah, right now um, we see that Pipeworks is really uh, the main team with wards up right now uh, on the map. Um, they have the pink ward that actually was able to take out Blue's pink ward they had in River. Um, and then we see the ward up top that Kale just plays. Jace actually counter warding a little bit there. Kale actually throwing down two, actually has two wards now. Oh, actually, yeah, she has two wards now. So she's pretty safe from any type of gank that would come in there. Um, personally, I actually really like now the fact, I mean, it's kind of weird because uh, Sightstone, as a common item on a lot of supports recently, has made it so that you have all these free green wards, 
And really what we've learned from a lot of the pro teams, what they're starting to shift towards now, is pretty much everybody just buys pink wards because, I mean, the ward, the ward positions are figured out at this point, but never mind, Hecarim coming in <laughs> with a big, huge alt there and a nice flash out by Tuttle. Will he be able to escape a lot of damage coming from Hecarim? And that's going to be wrapped up by Hannibal in that top lane with that Reckoning and really, really nice pressure up in that top lane, Silence and Jace down um, up there. And so they're going to actually even, even up the kills <clears throat> here and the goal's going to become pretty close. Yeah, he um, decided not to go through try, which was great for him. And he committed to his ghost really early, and that's one thing I like to see in Hecarim or any other jungler that runs ghosts, because if you use it like Flash and wait until it's too late, um, that's not what it, what, while it's effective, it's not quite as good. Because the whole point of ghost is to run past wards or past their vision as fast as you can, and it closes the reaction time on them. And because of that, he was able to get on him super fast and knock him back. Oh, he played that perfect. Oh, in mid lane, there was a Nom coming straight for Morgana's back, and she flashed just in time to dodge that on the windup from uh, from Cho'Gath right there. But I also have to give Amumu the Amumu props too, because he's he's fairly tanky, but he saw the black shield and um, he actually just waited out the black shield entirely. Went in. Cho'Gath got a little bit of cold feet and wasn't quite able to follow it up as well. But very very nicely done um, by the Amumu. He's been doing a good job in this jungle so far. Heck, I'm waiting patiently for something bot lane. I don't know if anything's going to come out of it with his health. He does have those move 5 boots, so he's, he's ready to roll. See, Ezra actually blowing True Shot Barrage just to try to clear this wave. Actually going for sustain first, where Caitlyn we see just with that BF sword just be really scary with damage. Plus, it's going to be really easy for her to last hit um, having a BF sword and a long sword in tow. Seems that Caitlyn's just been blowing her all early. She It's on cooldown right now, about half of it. So I think they're just looking to push her out and um, take the tower. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's actually a, pretty, a lot of strategy that Caitlyn's kind of, of resorted to recently. They're like, I don't care who this hits in bottom lane. It's going to deal damage, and it's on a low enough cooldown that I can just keep rinse repeating this. We can see it's already a quarter of the way back um, off cooldown. So it's worth it. It's long range. They can't do much about it. Yeah, now she's going to win um, the CS. So... Yeah, gonna pull slightly ahead. Nice, nice little combo right there. The Drakeum and Gat Gat just waiting it up there, patiently to get those last hits. Chogat's minion lead starting to grow as well, even more. I don't know how much more they're gonna be able to do to Morgana at this state. Her black shield's getting too strong. Um, but looks like they're gonna try for something here. Move yeah. Wait patiently. Again, I think it's just a matter of like they're they're tanky enough that they can dive and they can wait it out. Like right now. That was just Bone and Amumu waiting in the wings. And Here we're going to have a scrum right now. Soul Shackle coming in, plus the fear. Amumu's actually going to flash back in, use Curse of Sad Money, but will he be able to live that Ignite? Just has to tick one more time, but Hecarim's going to seal it up. Uh, and now the Rupture, not close enough to be underneath her. Will that Ignite tick? It will. Dirty Aardvark pick up a kill. Meanwhile, Kale blowing Cleanse in the top lane. Run for a life. I don't necessarily know what uh, the Cleanse was for, but... Even trade. Both the junglers going down. Yeah, it was she didn't cleanse for Ignite because Ignite is still up on Jace, so I don't know why she cleansed or what Jace has that she can that is worth cleansing. Because I don't think he doesn't have any slows, does he? Jace? Yeah. I don't. I still don't know what he does. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's just like this weird enigma. Like you know that some blast keeps flying at your face. Otherwise, like everything else is like witchcraft and wizardry. That's how I feel. <laughs> They've been releasing a lot of champions lately with. Like seven abilities, and I still don't know what they do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Elise, Elise is one of those ones too, where I was playing her the other day, and I and like I was so into her, uh, the the web combo and everything I was doing with the, in the spider form that I forgot that she has like the really cool like, um, or I guess kind of like uh, kind of dumb spider bomb that she has where yeah. like, you can pick a point and it goes to it and then it it's it like basically has technology where it's like okay i'm gonna find a target to run towards but then eventually there's a point where it stops and just sits there's like i i don't know what to do and it like turns left and right and then it blows up in the middle of nowhere and you're like oh <laughs> like <laughs> but it is pretty cool Duracell batteries <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is kind of a cool ability though because you can throw it around stuff but and Ezreal getting in there he's gonna stand in the middle of absolute zero has no escapes so he's gonna get a huge amount of damage here Caitlin's and Caitlyn's awesome. running him down in the background flash just barely popped and oh, th oh man I think they might live unless they get ace in the hole ace in the hole no all right she's saving up mana Pushed him out, and there's the two shot barrage just to try to push up this lane. 
Maybe waiting for Mahil, the Tark, to hang around and try to CS a little bit. I, we'll see what they do, but this could be really there dangerous if they could have called in a gank or rotated down here. Alright, uh, Hecarim's nowhere near bottom, so this tower is going down. Tower secured. A lot of people low right now. Kale's been having a hard time up in the top lane. Just constantly at low health, and we see Amumu kind of stalking around in the enemy jungle. Red buff is up, so he could steal this. And it looks like he is going to go for it, because Hecarim is actually down to blue right now. And not even thinking about giving it to Morgana. Morgana uh, still hanging around pushing this mid lane. Doesn't really want to leave, leave it alone. But, I mean, look at this Cho'Gath. Like, both of them just kind of looking at each other. Like, what are we ever going to do to each other? Hannibal run for his life. Jace. Here comes Amumu. Gate shot. Just barely misses. And Amumu out from the side hatch. And Kale's ult's down. So yeah. if he gets in there. Oh. Ooh, there's that Hecarim. But there is backup fear coming in. Jace getting very, very low now. Will Mumu be able to save him? It looks like he's actually going to turn back on to Hannibal. Gets that red buff procced. And now it's a matter of can Hecarim run him down. Cho'Gath was rotating up, but now he's actually being stopped by Morgana up here um, on the on the crossover. And now they're actually doing battle between themselves. Looks like he Hecarim is going to be able to wrap that one up. And we see a flash out by Morgana over the wall to escape this Cho'Gath, who's still over half health. Uh, Mumu was smart enough to know he wasn't going to escape using his ult too, so he's got that for the next fight. And I'm wondering if they're going to go for Dragon finally. They've got that bot tower, so if Caitlyn can just push it out, um, a lot of the other team's alts are going to be down for this next fight, and I think they could win it. See how they react to that. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good call. Plus they have this. They, plus they have the Nunu there, so they actually have another. Um, almost like, uh, and they have Cho'Gath, so like their buff control, like they should not be able to lose a buff if there's a, if a counterplay on it. Because between Feast, uh, Consume, and a Smite, um, they should have that locked down. As long as they have the coordination. This could also mean uh, early Baron too, so we'll have, to, we'll have to keep an eye on them if they get enough of an advantage and they feel like they want to try to sneak something, get some ward advantage. But based on the wards I've seen so far, there's a lot of warding um, from Raytheon now in that, that bottom uh, jungle and around dragons, so they're pretty much setting up for that objective at the current moment. Whew. Lots of poke coming in, but they have no turret here, so they have to be careful. Like, Amumu should really be thinking about getting into this bottom jungle. It looks like Cho'Gath is coming back, but, I mean, if you see those two up there that far, they do have one ward uh, down here that's positioned right above uh, this ramp above <coughs> Dragon, but beyond that, like, he could probably sneak up and around and, and do a lot of damage to the enemy team if he wanted to. Okay, so the enemy team, the blue team knows Hecarim's down there. He went through the ward at blue. Something, they might be able to bait something out here. Oh, but he hit a trap, so now he knows they know. <laughs> the mind games ensue. <laughs> and the ward was killed, so Ezreal's coming over here, and ward goes over the wall, so now they know that is there as well. No auto attacks going down, and now they're going to come down here towards Dragon. Team's collapsing now, along with Morgana, so we have a 4v4. Chow got split. They have the advantage if they get on him. Oh yeah, they do. Actually, <laughs> absolute zero in the bushes. No stun coming out, and there is actually a beautiful curse of the sad mummy. But will he be able to clean this one up? Hecarim still in the back lines, trying to do some damage. Actually, focus on to Caitlyn. This could be a good move. Switches back over to Hamumu, oh, and now it's a giant Cho'Gath is going to land that rupture, and now it's going to be Ezreal trying to kite this red buffed up Cho'Gath. Will he be able to run down? He's the got vision. <laughs> Arcane shift over the wall. So a trade right there, three for three. Um, again, like you called out, I think if Cho'Gath was in there all, was in the fight all along and wasn't split out, um, I think it would have been actually a lot more in favor uh, right there for Raytheon. But since Pipeworks actually was able to, to kind of split them in there and, and choose one side to go, um, actually ended up with a pretty even trade there. So I actually like that. I mean, I think they were a little bit, yeah, they were a little bit down in gold. So, I mean, any trade when you're kind of behind like that is actually a good trade for the team that's behind. However, though, um, they did give Cho'Gath the killing spree bonus off of that Hecarim, so he's going to get even stronger. And Cho'Gath's best time is mid-game. Becomes this unstoppable beast monster that blocks every skill shot. And I think they're going to have a hard time dealing with that, simply because their team's not that tanky. And I think that was pretty evident in the last fight. Even Hecarim almost went down really early, so... Yeah, I mean, he's six, he's six sacks up right now. Um... Is, he's pretty huge. He's pretty huge. He's actually uh, he's uh, three levels away from being able to bump up to that max alt. And then, I mean, right now, like you said, like he's so beefy that 
for them to try to deal with them is going to be really, really hard. Although, he has no team out, uh, out here with him to try to stop this dragon. So, it looks like Pipeworks might be able to get this. The random rupture to try to steal. But Ace of the Hole coming in. Hecarim's going to be able to block it and run away really quickly. Will they be able to disengage? It looks like they will be able to do it. Um, and nice pickup for them because I think that, I mean, in a full-on engagement, they were in a lot of trouble. Uh, although, Curse of Sad Mummy is still down. But they have that giant Cho'Gath to wait in there. Is this true? Looks like Kale's losing top now. He's getting out-sustained by Jace. And I think the game might come down to which Bruiser top is going to carry their team. And since Jace's team is already in the lead, it's going to be tough. Yeah. I mean, look at that poke. Like, there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, the siege of the siege of Jace, at least that we get in the later games, to push for push just for pushing turrets purposes. Oh wow, picks up the kill right there. Hannibal getting you know, thinking he could maybe go in and make something happen, but that poke really, really strong. And now they have the giant front line that is Oh wow, Hecker coming in the back. A soul shackle protecting the turret. And now we're seeing uh, Raytheon trying to back off out of this. Nice move by Hecker right there coming in, spoiling that push. Because they looked pretty, they looked pretty satisfied with that. They're gonna push it down, and you saw him come out the down. side hatch. Top tower is down, and I think Jace is gonna start carrying this game. Um, Kale made the mistake of going back in, and not only does she lose her tower, now she's dead as well, and it's not gonna help her team very much. And it looks like they're gonna pick up this mid tower as well. Yeah, I mean the the po oh, oh wow, Moo Moo, beautiful engagement right there. Black shield coming down after the fact. And just gonna let Morgana escape, and that's it. And all that minion taking the gate shot <laughs> for the team. <laughs> so this is why you gave me 23 gold and sent me out here, you bastard. They could potentially fight this if Hecarim doesn't get too far ahead. I think he's a little low. He doesn't have that many tanky items yet. He's only got the chain vest, so he really needs to get a giant spell in there at least. Yeah, what I've been seeing a lot of is the the, the spirit of the elder lizard at least um, quite early because it gives you so much damage, and then they just try to get tanky after that. But again, he went sheen as well as that too, so he's very, he's very heavy on the damage side. But again, like you said, probably could use a little bit of health, and once he gets that, he'll be he'll be a really scary beast in a lot of these team fights, even beyond what he already is. If they can kite him late game, there's a chance, but they're gonna start losing out on so many objectives if they keep this up. I don't know if they want to team fight him right now. They just Get to ward up the jungle a bunch and protect those towers and don't let them baron at any cost. Yeah, we actually see this baron actually being uh, warded up a little bit, at least by uh, Raytheon so far. And they have a nice little uh, triangle of doom around there. Nothing in baron pit. Probably going to get some pink wards to bring it back uh, for that. But nice warding actually set up by Raytheon now that they've taken down um, these outer turrets and just kind of getting set up for... The rotation game push it out. They haven't lost a single turret yet, so map map advantage completely uh, in their favor right now. Definitely, and Morgana just finished a rod of ages, so that's going to take a while to stack. Um, so she doesn't have too much going for her yet. Once she gets some more AP and possibly an hourglass, they might have a shot at winning one of these team fights. I think they're really going to need that CC. It's going to be hard to survive with all these alts. Nudie running for his life right now. The net actually coming in to try to stop Hecarim, but he's just going to dive in there and try to stick on those possible absence here coming in, and he gets knocked away. Trying to do his best and just wasting time. Run up through this jungle to protect this turret a little bit. Now she goes back for just uh, insult snowball is what that was. And Kale underneath turret is able to pick up a kill onto Kaelin. Now trying to run away. Gets the black shield as well. And now it's just a Cho'Gath 1v5. Oh, Jace backing him up. They can still clear this wave fine. I don't think purple's going to do anything. It's Cho oh, and yeah. Jace are so far ahead right now. Yeah. Combine it, add in a Mumu alt, uh, and that would have been really, really tough for Pepworks. But, hey, they were able to pick up two kills, um, so victory for them at least so far. Still haven't been able to, to push onto that turret, but uh, I, like the, I like the play coming in there. Definitely didn't hurt. So as long as they're pulling off little plays here and there, and they don't trade back very much, they might be able to win. They just need to catch somebody, and that's all they can do right now. Yeah, I mean, they're actually doing a good job of just all nickel and diming their way back into this game. They're creeping up back towards that. Uh, they're up, they're, I mean, they're only down about 4K, so, I mean, they're still very much in the game. They just have to deal with the fact that they have to get through the part of the game where they have to deal with this giant Cho'Gath that they pretty much can't kill at this point. If they can play the waiting game, I think they can get back in it. It's going to take 
It's going to be a long wait, though. I don't know if you've seen this Cho'Gat score, but he's already 4-0-1. He's got his Warmogs going and his Wits in. Morgana's not going to take him out. and He's really going to rely on Ezreal and uh, Hecarim to kill him, if you ask me. And I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hecarim, Hecarim is really strong in the, in the late game as, as Jungle. He's one of the strongest ones, so... We'll see if you know if he finally gets uh, his his full item build up if he's gonna be able to affect that. But again, yeah, it's like there's this big unmovable wall. So I think what they have to do is actually just kind of do what they're doing now, where they keep you know Kale split. They get some split pushing action to get some turrets, or you know, like you said, try to get some pickoffs here and there. Because just standing in front of this beast, if you can see right now, Ezreal's just throwing in like little tickle shots at him, and Jace is just firing lobs of damage from the back just behind him, and they, they're never gonna be able to touch or deal with that. Mm. And that and Caitlyn went for her IE first, and Ezreal's sitting on a Bloodthirster Brutalizer. So he's got more sustain than her, but her pokes are going to hurt a lot more. And that's what she's all about right now, is pushing towers and poking people. So they're going to win the poke war too. Have you seen this? <laughs> they have Jace, Caitlyn, Joga. <laughs> Not too many. They got a couple heals on the other side, though. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. So far, the reaction times from Pipeworks uh, haven't quite been quick enough. So I don't even know if they're gonna be able to just try to shield a lot of it too. I think they just might you know get poked down a little bit like we're, we're talking about here. So we'll see how this goes. But there's no bit. I mean, everything's just kind of like stagnated right now. Uh, Pipeworks was able to get up a lot of pink wards and protect themselves. But uh oh, <laughs> Tarek flashing over the wall and actually getting divine intervention to protect himself right there. But Ace in the hole coming out from the side. Gets him decently low, another rupture, but he gets the black shield to protect him. So luckily they were able to throw down a lot of protection on him. And meanwhile, this dragon looks like it's going to go down pretty shortly. Yeah, unless Ezreal can time this perfectly, I don't think they're going to beat a Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath, Nunu Smite? Yeah, it's just, that's that's a lot of damage to try to beat. Better just save your ult at that point. Yeah, clear, clear waves, push lanes, whatever you have to do. I mean, it might be a good idea at this point to actually send it top to clear that top wave. Um, to stop it from pushing on them. Yeah, he might be forced to do that. Um, also, we have two flashes down now. Tarek and Morgana both down just from little engages here and there. And Kale's down as well. So. He's been using that mid lane to deal some damage. Now Morgana trying to get deep, gets three. And Hecarim comes in and gets a fear off. And they're going to be able to pick off Nunu and separate the team. Cho'Gath actually... Scooting wide, and actually, this is really good for Pipeworks at this point. Trying Nuno's to run down this enemy team. <laughs> if they get too cocky, Mumu's jumping right back in there and watch them get decimated. Chogat's here. He's ready to roll. He's ready to party. Yeah, I have to say, uh, I don't know. Like, I was looking at, I was looking at them, and and all I saw on their minds as I was watching their actions was saved by the Kel was just basically just like running for it. And I didn't. I, I look. I, I was thinking that too. I was like, maybe they'll turn around. And then I was like, but they don't look like they're gonna turn around. They're just running for their lives. Like, so I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're lacking a little confidence here. It's like, in Pipeworks, that might be their upper hand to you know to, to drag this out longer than it has to be. But Kale, we saw that top lane pushes that lane up. Now Jace has had to rotate up there, and they've kind of spread out the enemy team. So I mean, the more they kind of saw like this, I feel like they're getting. They're getting a little bit back in the game, even though we see the gold creep up. The later this game gets, the less that gold actually um, matters. Oh, and if you notice, um, Hecarim is taking quite a lead on farm and kills over Amumu. And Amumu is one of those champions that, well, got a big fight here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hecarim is being torn down, and now they're actually in a lot of trouble after that. And now we see Amumu actually getting out of dodge, not even being killed. Divine Intervention probably a little bit early because you're not going to be able to escape this, especially with that ace in the hole. But the flash, the flash is going to be good enough. And she should be able to get, if she gets a little bit moving speed, she'll be able to go this. Blood Boil, I'm always going to flash after to try to get it. I think he might Blood Boil himself to get that little bit of extra speed. But looks like, wow, Kale still surviving that one. Unfortunately, Ezreal <laughs> dying. Landed, silence, landed okay. down. Yeah, I mean, that silence, I mean, they, they, they nerfed it a little bit by making it scale with levels. But it's still a really long silence once you get max level. Um, which is usually what a lot of Cho'Gath max anyways now. So. Like they're gonna go for it. They got their pink down, and Purple Side has no vision and no way to stop this. It's a free Baron. Yeah, Pipeworks isn't gonna be able to stop this. They had some Valiant plays. They were doing some good things, but um, that fight right there was just ill-advised. And I mean, it's like if you if you <laughs> the one thing you don't want to do in a team fight is get caught by the curse of the sad mummy, right? And so like if you and your entire team engages on a mummy and you get everybody gets curse of sad mummy, it's kind of your own fault. Like at that point, just the base damage and his. AOE 
can take a team down half health. With the Sunfire Cape rolling and his Aegis, he's going to be able to survive for quite a long time. And that's all you really need on a Moomoo. After that, everything else is just for fun. <laughs> yeah. That's all you need on a Moomoo to be successful. Even though his farm isn't quite as high as Hecarim, like I said earlier, all you have to do is press R on more than three people and you win. Yep, so. yep. Hecarim now right Baron. now. Hecarim right now with the uh, the ice column as well. So he has a little bit of extra slow in there, but it doesn't really matter because he can dive in there and can keep people in position, but he's going to be the one running at the end more than likely um, from Pipeworks. And I don't know if they have the... Like, Pipeworks has a lot of stuff that's like hard engage, but they can't really hard engage and win a fight right now, which is kind of the weakness for them. And they can't really poke back very well, so... It's almost like they went for the same strategy, but got outpicked. <laughs> yeah. So, but they have more kite than the other team with Ezreal, so it's possible. See a Moomoo split pushing now in the bottom lane. Gotta get all those lanes pushing. That's actually really good, just like team mechanics for the late game. Just get all your lanes pushing and then just rotate between them. Uh, top's gonna auto push for them. Mid's already pushing. Moomoo got bottom started, dragged all five people bottom. And now, I mean, they can just put on the full press. They have that large poke um, from Kaylin and Jace in here and they have that Baron so the sustain advantage is completely on their side it's going to be very hard to do anything to him and oh Tarek might just fully die but a beautiful divine intervention right in time during that windup but the curse of the sad mummy in the jungle that was the wrong way to run and yeah. Morgana got caught out by this ward here and they got it right over by wolves and that's about it they're going to take a free inhib here two dead almost yeah. two dead I thought Tarek died. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there was a divine intervention right in time to stop the feast. Otherwise, uh, he probably would have went down. And Kale just poking her head way far in there. There's no divine intervention left to protect them. They're going to be snuffed out right there. And unfortunately, it looks like Pipeworks in a lot of trouble here as Raytheon looks to looks to close out this game. I mean, they have Cho'Gath. I don't know why they're just not attacking this turret. <laughs> like this Cho'Gath is just oh, making right. me so happy. <laughs> He's doing his job. I thought this bomb turret was already down. My bad. Like, they're so far ahead right now. Even Nunu can tank the tower for like eight shots and come out alright. Well, he has all that extra battle armor on him right now. Of course he can. <laughs> this skin's great. It is. It actually is a pretty awesome skin. Now they get another chance to try to defend this out here, but I mean, even. I mean, with Baron buffed up and how big Cho'Gath is, I mean, they can just wait in there and there's not much they can do about it. They can throw everything they have. At this team, and as long as they keep, as Caitlyn and Jace stay smart and don't get caught in too much stuff, I mean, they can't really do anything about this. It's one of those, uh, it's kind of one of those like drowning feelings. It's where like everything's pushing on you, like you really can't fight it, and you're just like slowly, you know, losing, losing, tr losing your uh, ability to tread water. And Choya bought um, the Crucible item. I watched him just use it to heal up Nunu there. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I oh, look at the one. chunk. Black Shield coming Hecarim's in to protect him. Yeah, Hecarim has to do that, though. He's the only one that can actually get in there and try to make something happen. And that's right where Morgana, sh you know, I have to... The, the Rod of Ages, it made her tanky, but she was so behind on it because Shogath was ahead that she really needed to go for Hourglass. Oh, ace in the hole for the ace. Uh, how fitting. But the point is, is like, it's... She, I think she should have went Hourglass first because right there is a perfect situation where she could have got in, could have Hourglass stayed alive, been effective, but she can't even survive long enough to get her alt off. And that's just kind of the story of this game. So GG uh, for Raytheon taking that game and they will be able to beat Pipeworks and really nicely executed. Yeah, it was a well-played game. They had two uh, AOE comps, but I think one was just a little bit tankier. And as I predicted, they came out ahead just from that Cho'Gath and Moomoo. Too hard to take down. Yeah, I mean, kind of a trend I've been noticing a lot l lately. It's just been purely, like, whatever team has the Cho'Gath generally has a pretty good advantage and wins, like, uh, at least in the competitive games I've been casting recently. It seems to typically go that way unless the other team is being smart and, you know, picks a comp that can kind of deal with it. But, I mean, he's hard to deal with when he runs away like that. So, big factor, maybe probably a ban that I'd look for for banning against um, Raytheon in the future. But congrats to them. They pulled off a really, really nice game um, overall. And... Yeah, better luck next time, Pipeworks. I've seen really good things from them, so hopefully uh, they come back next time and uh, 